Hello friends, in this video we're gonna create the laser scene and shoot it from the player. In the end it's gonna look like this. I can hold down the spacebar and the player is shooting lasers. Let's get started. The laser is going to be a new scene, so let's create one. This is going to be an area 2D because we simply want to detect when a laser touches something else. And then area 2D is the perfect use case for this. I'm going to rename this to be a laser and save this inside of the scenes folder. Next, I'm going to create a sprite 2D here and the collision shape. For the sprite, we're going to use this texture that I have called laserred.png. And by default, it's probably going to be too large, but let's see. I'm actually going to instance a player here so that we can see the laser next to the player. And it doesn't look too bad, but still I want to make it a little smaller. So maybe let's go for 0.8 in the scale. Let's move it down. Uh, I think it looks fine. I'm going to get rid of the player and let's create the collision shape. So this can be either a rectangle or a capsule. Let's go with a capsule. It is a nicer shape, I think. <laughs> and that looks fine. We also want to create a visibility, visible on screen notifier here so that we can delete the laser when it goes outside of the screen. And we can put this at the end here. I'm going to make it a little smaller. We'll put it at the bottom here, a little bit below the end of the laser so that it gets deleted just a little bit after the sprite and the collision shape exit, exits the screen. Okay, next up we need to create the script to create some functionality here. Let's put this inside of the scripts folder and let's create this script. Inside of here, we're not going to do anything complicated. We're going to make this move. So we need to bring physics process back. And in here, we're just going to access the global position because this isn't a character body. This is an area 2D. So we don't have the convenient move and slide function. We need to access the position manually like this. And in this case, we're only interested in the Y component here because we want this to move up. We don't care about the right and the left directions. We're going to add this each frame a speed, which we're going to create and we're going to multiply this by delta because we're trying to add something each frame and to make that frame rate independent, we need to multiply it by delta. And this speed is going to be negative because up in Godot is negative and in this case, laser will go up. Let's create the export variable speed and let's set this to be, hmm, so the player moves at 300, so this should at least be 600, I think. And even this might not be enough. We'll see. Okay, so this should be enough to make it go up. So before we start spawning this from the player, let's go to the game scene and let's instance a laser here. And let's put it at the bottom and let's run the game. Yes, we can see that it is going up. That is all good. Now we can think about instancing the laser scene from the player, or first we can use the visible on screen notifier that we created here. What we're going to do is we're going to click on it, take a look at its signals. It has the screen exited signal, which is emitted when this visibility notifier exits the screen. We're going to connect this signal to the laser script. So when the laser exits the screen, we don't need it anymore. So we can just call Q3. And this will take care of the lasers that we shoot and miss the target. Okay, now we can go to the player scene. And in here, we're going to spawn the laser when the shoot input action is pressed. I'm going to create a marker 2D here to, now I'm going to call this muzzle. And this is going to represent the point that the player shoots the laser from. We're going to use the global position of this, basically. And inside of the script, I'm going to create a variable to hold the laser scene. And we're going to preload the packed scene here, laser.tscn. We're going to create a function called shoot. And in this function, we're going to shoot the laser. 
In fact, we're actually not going to do that. We're going to create a signal up here called laser shot. And we're just going to emit this signal here. Because if we instance the laser here inside of the player and add it as a child of the player, then the position of the laser will be affected by the player. And we don't want that. What we're going to do is we're going to create the signal emitted when the shoot action is pressed. And then in the game script, we're going to connect the signal and instance the laser there and add it as a child of the game scene. OK, so I'm going to bring the process function here because this isn't a physics thing that we're doing. So we don't need to use physics process. We can just do this inside of regular process. And in here, we're going to do a check for is action just pressed shoot. So when the shoot action is pressed, in this case, the space bar, we're just going to call the shoot function that we created. And in here, let's do a few things. Actually, hmm, let's see. We can either instance the laser here and send the instance with the signal, or we can just send the preloaded packed scene with the signal, and then we can instance it inside of the game script. Let's do it that way. So this signal will actually take the laser scene and the location that we want to put this laser on. And in shoot, we can simply say laser shot, which is the signal, dot emit. And then we need to give the arguments. The first one is going to be the laser scene that we preloaded here. The second one is going to be the position. In this case, we're going to give the position of the muzzle. So let's quickly create a reference to it up here. And down here, we can just say muzzle.global position. And the shoot function is basically complete. We're basically emitting the signal and we're passing the laser scene and the position of the muzzle, the global position of the muzzle. Now we need to go to the game scene. And we can either connect the signal from the inspector or we can just do it inside of our script here because we already have a nice reference to the player here. So why not connect the signal in here as well? I'm going to say player dot laser shot dot connect and we're going to connect this to on player laser shot of course we need to create this function which i'm going to do down here and this will take in the laser scene and the location so we are being past these remember we gave it to the signal here and now we're getting it back and in here we can simply create a new instance of the laser by saying laser scene dot instantiate. I hope I spelled that right. Then we need to use the global position and set that to the location that we got passed. And finally, we can add this laser as a child. And instead of adding it as a child of the game, I'm going to create a new node here. This is going to be a node 2D called laser container so that it is all nice and tidy inside of our main game scene. Let's create a reference to this. And we can simply say laser container dot add child laser. Let's try this and see. When I click space, a new laser is instanced. And everything seems to be working. Let's take a look at the remote tab. This will show us the running game. And inside of the running game, we shouldn't have any lasers. And we don't. Good. That means the lasers that went outside of the screen got deleted. And we can see that in action here. If I start shooting, you can see that we have some lasers, but they immediately disappear because they're being deleted. Great. So a small little recap inside of the player. Well, first we created the laser scene, obviously, and area 2D. We have the visible on screen notifier to delete it when it goes out. And in the physics process, we're simply making it go up in the Y axis. The speed seems to be fine as well at 600. So this is the laser scene. Then we went to the player scene, to the player script. We created the muzzle first. And then we have the laser scene here as a preload variable. This can also be in the game scene, the game script, I mean. But this is the way we decided to do it. 
we have a signal called laser shot, which takes in a scene and a location, which is a position 2D. We're checking for the shoot action that we created in the previous lecture. And when the shoot action is pressed, we're calling this shoot function, which simply emits the laser shot signal here and passes in the laser scene and the position of the muzzle. Finally, inside of the game script, we connected the player's laser shots signal to a function that we created here. And in here, we're simply instancing the laser scene that we were passed. We're setting the position to the position that we were passed in. And finally, we're adding it as a child of the laser container. Everything is good. Finally, I want to make it so that we can hold down the spacebar and keep shooting. Because with this setup, we need to keep clicking, keep pressing the spacebar to shoot. And I don't like that. I like to hold it down, hold the spacebar down and keep shooting. So that's going to be very simple to do. Actually, we just need to create a variable here called shoot cooldown. I'm going to say CD for short, and we're going to set this to be false at first. So this is going to be a Boolean. When we press the shoot action, we're simply going to check if shoot cooldown is false, which I'm going to say not shoot cooldown, which means the shoot cooldown is false. We're going to shoot. But before that, we're going to set the shoot cooldown to be true. And after we shoot, we can just use the await keyword, create a timer here with get to recreate timer. And let's set the timer to be like 0.25. And we need to wait for its timeout signal. So this will basically turn this function into a core routine. What this means is, and after this, I'm going to set the shoot cooldown to be false. What this means is we're going to, when we press the shoot action, we're going to set the shoot CD to be true, shoot. And then we're going to wait for 0.25 seconds. And then we're going to set the shoot cooldown to be false again. So until this await is done, we're not going to get into this if statement because the shoot cooldown will be true. We also need to change the is action just pressed to is action pressed because just pressed only checks the action once when you press it. But is action pressed will keep checking it as long as you have it pressed. Okay, let's try this out. I'm gonna hold the space bar down. And as you can see, I'm shooting. And when I let it go, I stop shooting. And you can play with this point to five here to achieve different effects. For example, if we set this to be 0.1, we're gonna really fire rapidly, as you can see. We can actually make this a variable as well. We can say rate of fire here, which is going to be an export variable as well up here. And we're gonna set this to be 0.25. Okay, so this is going to be it for this lecture. Now we have a laser scene and we're shooting that laser scene from the player. And everything is looking good. If this video was helpful, please leave a like, comment and subscribe. If you want to learn Godot, I have a course where I teach this stuff in a much more slower pace for beginners. So be sure to check that out. There's a link in the description. Again, thank you for watching. I will see you in the next one.